Her name is SZA. Sovereign zigzag zig a la. So much ground to cover. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> well. Um, you're from Jersey, I understand. Well, by yeah. way of like St. Louis. Yes, I was thinking about I, yes. You live in LA. Yeah, I but, do. But we claim you in the tri-state area. Yeah, claim me. Yeah. I'm down. Okay. I read that your real name is Solana. Yes. How did you come with SZA? Well, my friends call me Sos for short. Um, I guess just like Solana, just cut to Sos. And initially it was like Sosa, like a thing. And then Chief Keef came out and it was like, this can't be a thing. This is like embarrassing. Not embarrassing, but like you can't, nobody knows who you are. Everyone knows who Chief Keef is. So it's like if you come out, even if this being your name amongst your friends and family, it's just like now you're wilding it and like baby Chief Keef. So... I nixed that, and I just, I don't know. I just, it, like, descended on me overnight. It was just like, S C yeah, I believe in this. And then looking at the Supreme Alphabet, and um, it just made sense. I've always felt that way about Islam, too. Like, it just kind of makes sense in terms of... Are you into Supreme Mathematics, Supreme Alphabet, and all I'm that? not. I'm not. I understand. So you don't know today's math? I don't know today's <laughs> math. <laughs> My father is Orthodox, like Sunni, Muslim. And then, of course, like there was, I've always, the Riz is just my favorite. He's like, he's very, I don't know, I love his panache, but like his genius, but his boss, but his like hood at the same time. He's very, he's so multifaceted. He's got a lot of multiplicity. It's weird. Do you and the Riz, you guys know each other? He He's appreciative you know and respective of like SZA. I'm sure you like, he's like, yo, Riz is SZA. Like he was. Yeah. He has shown me nothing but love and like blessings and respect, which is nuts. And we had a cool day on a boat and listened to some tunes. Did you play me out? Um, I did the album at the time. Right. <laughs> the my album's taken like three different forms. So but yeah, at the time that was the wave of the album. I don't know why I've just like landed I think I need to like work in really short intervals and if i don't i just keep doing things all over again until it's something completely different give me another month and i probably would have had a whole nother album i'm like, sure your label hates that yes everyone is tired of me i just have anxiety it's hard it's hard for me to like accept it's weird it's like even the heels and like tighter clothes and other things i just i'm still just me so i have a lot of anxiety about the world and like my thoughts and what people think about my thoughts and like but you know we all love you, right? Like you're very clear that we find you beautiful, talented, amazing. We love your writing. Like you're clear, right? Or is that not clear? <laughs> or you're just um, reluctant to accept it? Thank you for saying those things about me. I just, I don't know. You know, we see the world as we are, not as it is. So I don't know. I think it's based on maybe the way I see myself. Or like I'm just incredibly just in my head like I didn't even realize I was gone for like four years until someone did like the anniversary of Chay by mine and I was like what are you talking about like five years how like prove it and I don't know it just really put a whole bunch of shit in perspective and I was like wow I've been in my head for a minute so it's weird who knows how people see me who knows if everyone sees me the same way like for the same reasons well, based on what I see online and the response to the music, I think a lot of people agree. Does anybody call you Solana or Scissor always the thing? What are yeah, the names the like fans call you? I feel like I'm in trouble you? if you call me Solana. And sometimes if I'm on stage and I hear a fan like say Solana in the crowd, if my, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> like it's like a whole different, it's weird. But I know it's my name, but nobody calls me that. So just call her SZA, guys. That's fine. No, it's ridiculous. My name, you can call me whatever you want. I'm not even a stickler like about that. Like, I I don't care. I know I also picked, like, a three-letter. What about Lana? Yeah. They might call you Lana? Yes, actually. Amber, my best friend. And so, that was oh, my, so that's a thing. Yes. It is a thing amongst, like, I don't know, very old friends. Very old friends. And, like, when I was... 14, I got a really cheap tattoo. <laughs> that says yeah. Lana. No, but I said long live tramp stamps and pepper ants. So I have a tramp oh, stamp. Oh, so it's lower back. Yeah. Woo. That's the Lana. And um, 
I was really young and it was ten dollars a letter and I had forty bucks. <laughs> and that's how I have a new nickname. I don't know. I don't know. I need to figure this out actually. People call me Sis, which is like how you abbreviating an abbreviation. Sis. I like Sis. Yeah. And now you have this new album, Control, which is out tomorrow. Why is Control the title? I don't know. It's a concept. It's like a live concept. I have a thing about I need to be in control. I've never had control. I love to pretend I'm in control. I love I love the lie. I love the chase. Like, I don't know, the need. And then I also love relinquishing control and just accepting that this moment is not mine. Like, it's just going to be like allowing the flow of like whatever I'm in to happen. And those are very hard lessons for me, like with death, with work, with myself, with my own body. Like, it's just interesting. Like, you think I have very strong willpower and I've been able to will like 80% of my life into existence. But the few things I've also willed some wild existence that did not go right for me and I've had to live with that and understand that like control really um I don't know it's a fantasy like it's not it's not real it's not it's just it's something that creates wanting and wanting creates pain it's just being is better so I don't know control is a concept it's a life and so life's work <laughs> and, and and I'm guessing that in each of these songs Right, you're either relinquishing, re relinquishing control. This had to do with a particular control. person. The but entire yes, album. Not one particular person, but my interpersonal relationships. Um, that I, where I grappled with control, and what they really meant to me. Like, was I getting played? Was I, was I doing the playing? Was I pretending to do the playing to make myself feel better? I'm really interested personally. When you said that your father was Orthodox Muslim, you said? Yes. Um, so I'm sure you grew up in a very controlled environment. Yes. We had <laughs> control, a wonderful that's time. the album, Control. Another look at Control. A pun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now, though, you are like, look, I'm a grown woman. Based on these visuals I'm seeing, like, how is... Oh, man. How is that... How is Dad receiving the okay, video? Okay, so he hasn't said anything about Love Galore uh, yet. My mother... Just was very direct. Don't do that shit again. <laughs> I have two more videos to go. I kind of gave like a minor heads up. I don't really know. I don't know. I just, I feel like I try to do things. I try to think about like, what is, what's the intention? I didn't do it because I'm trying to be cute like out here. I mean, I'm comfortable, but it's more so about like, I love these directors. I love this lighting. Like these are dream situations for me. Like, Dream of Dave Myers, dream of Nabil. So, and I don't know. I'm too like, I don't know. I'm too stoked about like being blessed about all the stuff like going on and like being able to even share the way I see my world with the world. I don't really care about my. So, if mom and dad are mad, then mom and dad. No, I'm kidding. No, I love. <laughs> I'm kidding. I um, <laughs> I love them. They know. They love me. They're my friends. It's weird, we took so long, but now we're like, I'm just obsessed with my parents. I'm one of those folks where it's just like, a, I love my mom and dad. I just, I cry leaving them, like, it's ridiculous. But they believe in me, like, they're logical people. They're reasonable people, and I realize now they were only strict because they're reasonable. Like, they're black, they come from the South and the Midwest, and they don't come from anything. They're moving into the suburbs, they're, very conservative. They're not really trying to take a gang of risks. Like maybe music definitely sounds like a hobby if both of them went through corporate America and like worked really hard to like, I don't know, to get a certain thing. Like, you know what I mean? So I understand now, we had a whole talk about it like last week where I was just like, it's totally fine because I got here anyway. And I learned some cool shit that I may not have learned had they just been hella accepting anyway, so. Interesting concept <laughs> that their kind of strict level of parenting caused you to learn and even push against the strictness in some ways, right? Yes, because I rebelled really hard and I learned everything the hard way. I am very hard-headed, very curious. So this is, these videos aren't the first time that you guys have disagreed. No, 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 no. 
I like, I love my pants. I put them through the gauntlet. Just like, it's just funny, like, letting people joyride in my parents' car when they're gone in Texas for the weekend. They bring on the chase with the cops. My dad comes home. Now I'm getting beat in front of my friends. It's just like, but why? Like, why am I doing so much? Like, this makes no sense. Do you but, ever, do you know why? Like, at this point in your life, do you look no, back and know I'm why? I'm still wilding, so I, I I know that it must be in my makeup. And I, at times I get really sad because I feel like I'm out of control and I wish that I was, I used to wish that I was like a very like, like organized, poised, like individual that was just like, man, I got it, I got it all together like right now. And I just, um, I don't know, I think accepting that I'm just kind of like, I can't get it together. It's just part of my thing. Like it's just the way I am. So I don't know. I think I'm going to be wild in different ways. Like I, like, Two years ago, I got hit by a car in Mexico riding a motorcycle. What? Racing my friends. They made a cut in a side street, and I had to go for it. It's a recurrent theme here, your friends. Mm-hmm. That keep getting you in trouble. No, my friend, I get my friends in trouble. I will never air my friends like that. Like, And they will so not allow not me to drag them. So not this craziness. Absolutely not. I was banned from my friends growing up. It was just like, Solana's a bad influence. Don't bring her over here. Wow. Other parents. Yes. But not all of them. One of my friends was a bad influence on me, and she was just enough to take me over the edge. <laughs> it was great. That's a dope story. So, once you uh, talk me into this Drew Barrymore record, I love that it feels classic and new all at the same time. I love your tone of voice on it, your perspective on it, but I think you would need to. And Drew Barrymore loves it also, which is exciting because I, I saw her, her talking. I love her. She's amazing. How did that love for her happen? I think there was something about like, her quirkiness, like she, I don't know, like her teeth were less than perfect and like, but her smile was so beautiful. It just had so much energy and like her laugh. I have like a belly laugh and her and Cameron Diaz have like belly laughs that they're kind of goofy. It's kind of just like, what is going on? But it's just like, it's like uncontrollable. Like it's, she was very like, in her time of like Nicole Kidman's and like the very aristocratic like white women that were just like, you know, very prim and proper and modelesque she was just like a ball of energy and just very her it was very inspiring so when I think of like never been kissed or like ever after or um Ivy or just, I don't know any of that kind of and so you're a big fan of all of her films yes anyone I've ever seen yes if I haven't seen it then I can't speak I heard you mention tacos in this record too are you a big taco fan I love tacos I love burritos I love tacos I love food in general, actually. Favorite restaurant? Um, anywhere that has pasta, cheese, something that'll make me ill. I want it. I want to go. Bad food. Yes, take me. <laughs> Are you um like vegan? You said something that'll make no, you ill. No, I'm just allergic to everything and don't care. So I'm just wilding, just generally. So I don't know. I try to eat paleo, so I don't. What does that mean well. exactly? No grains, okay. low sugar, um, lots of meat, and vegetables. So um, you're on the first track on Rihanna's anti album. I am. I love her. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. But in listening to your early works, in listening to that anti project, mm -hmm. how much of your music do you think has influenced where, would you consider yourself R&B? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't really think about that. Yeah. I used to trip off it when, um, I don't know, like I was going to say when I was younger, but I feel like I would disappear so damn long. I can't say when I was younger. I did used to trip off. I would just be like, no, like don't label me R&B. Like don't put me in a box. Like I'm. why can't I be alternative? Why can't I? Like I don't really care. As long as the music is good and honest and like I just want to make good music. I want to try. I want to be my best artist self. And however people need to process it for themselves is however I want them to take it. So if you need it to be R&B, if you need it to be soul, if you need it to be gospel, if you need it to be alternative, like whatever you want. If you just want to rep some shit for yourself, like it's just make Glitter Trap. That's what I started as. Like I don't care about genres. Glitter Trap. Wow. That's Damn. what I started. <laughs> remember? Yeah, wow. you don't remember? I don't know. I remember hearing that and I was like, what is that? What is that? Know, yeah. Hear. Is that like girl music trap? I made I mean, it up. I was sleepy. It was, it was good, though. Thanks. It worked. It, 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 evidence suggests it worked out pretty good. Thanks. 
So, but how much of yourself do you hear now when you listen to music? Because I think, I feel like you've influenced a lot of music without even putting, I mean, this is your first official album. And obviously you've written with people I think everybody is people. influencing each other. Like, okay. I think that's, in terms of like the synergy of sound, that's how it works. Everybody and frequencies in terms of like it's weird. There'll be people I've never met before, I've never worked with before. But like when I get into the studio with them, they're on the same shit that I'm on. Like into the same sounds. We've never we don't have any crossbreeding in terms of like producers. I really just think music is another dimension. It's like a weird frequency, and some of that shit travels. Like if your strong, if your thoughts are strong enough, and like your intentions are strong enough for what you're trying to create. Like if someone is of a like energy and of a like mind, it's very likely that you might sound alike. Just based on what's going on around you? Based on the likeness of your energy and what you're both putting hella energy into searching for. Like, if me, the same things may motivate, you know, me and Re. like, you know what I mean? She has a lot of passion and she don't, you know, she looks for, I don't know, like, I feel like she feel me sometimes. So it's like, that's what the, that's synergy or even I don't know outside of when I hear Tame Impala I'm like what when I hear Frank Ocean I feel like I could have been there like over his shoulder just like reading over his notes being like yep yep I, I would have said that because I feel that in here like it's in, I can't explain it <laughs> that's dope would you say Frank Ocean is one of the artists that inspire you right now oh my god all the time I think he inspires everybody really I don't know I might just be on some stands but I just genuinely feel that way because you said that like really how did but I just I don't know I just feel like he inspires everybody I feel like no matter who if you rap if you sing if you write poetry if you never even heard of him a day in your life and you just heard him tomorrow I think you'd be moved is there a scissor record do you you're touring you plan on touring because you tour you've toured but then you disappear and then you do your thing and then you pop back out again yeah. Is there a, you want to give me any inside information right now? Is there a tour I'm going that's going to happen? a full tour. Okay. A real one with all my friends. Who's all your and friends? And my band. They've been my band the whole time. If y'all that's ever dope. pay attention or like look at, they're the same folks, same faces, plus a new bassist, Carter, who actually produced Love Galore or with Cody, Andrew Barrymore, and like basically I made my whole album with them. Dope. But, um, I don't know. There'll be a tour. I'm going to do it right. It was a pleasure meeting you. Talking, well, I met you at Coachella, but hanging out with you. Yes. Likewise. It's a pleasure. SZA, Solana, Lana, a.k.a. Sis.